We've heard a bit about cyberbullying, and what this session is about is what the law can do, because there is help at hand. Recently in England, the Guardian newspaper has been running a series of articles about misbehaviour on the internet. What they're after is the web that we want, a sort of safe environment where everybody can get along together and can interact in a civilised way. The only trouble is that the stories that those articles tell are anything but the web we want. They tell stories of annoyance, threats, harassment, misconduct of a most terrible nature. And it all falls within the definition of cyberbullying, a kind of umbrella term that we might use for these sort of behaviours. So what do they include? They can include harassment, those continual unpleasant messages that are posted on your Facebook page or that are sent to you at your Twitter address. Stalking, where you know the person is present, sitting there in the online environment, watching you do what you do. The spreading of rumours which can destroy your digital shadow or your online reputation. The disclosure of those facts that it may be okay for your family to know about, but really, do you want them broadcast to the world? Exclusion. I saw your photograph on your Facebook page at such and such a restaurant. Why didn't you invite me? I'm not going to have anything to do with you anymore. And that message gets around. Or the same with the text messages that go around the school playground, except for one person who sees another group sniggering and laughing, and they're laughing at him or her, excluding. We all know about flame wars on the internet, heated exchanges that go completely out of control and end up in abuse and defaming and belittling and mocking. And then there are the incidents of impersonation, taking somebody's identity, identity theft, and creating an entirely different persona for a digital person. And this is really worse than real world bullying, which is bad enough, because real world bullying you can walk away from if you've got the courage, or it does stop when you leave work or you leave the school playground. But cyberbullying is very, very insidious indeed. And the reason for that lies within the very properties of digital technologies that we are using. Exponential dissemination is a term that I use. I'm a lawyer, so I try to make it as complicated as possible. <laughs> for going viral. Persistence of information or the document that doesn't die. Once the information is out there on the internet, you lose control of it. And of course, with your devices, your iPads, your smartphones, and so on and so forth, an extension of your arm, it's always on, 24-7. And those particular qualities are why cyberbullying can be so much more serious than the real world thing. So, a little bit of background history. In 2011, New Zealand had a conversation about cyberbullying. There were to be discussions about this, prompted by the coroner who was concerned about incidents of suicide and mental health issues, which were seen to be linked to the cyberbullying problem because they were being suffered by young people, digital natives, millennials, for whom a smartphone or a digital device was an extension of the arm. Then in 2012, the New Zealand Herald ran a series of articles on cyberbullying. Some of you may remember them. And this led to investigations and discussions within government and an investigation by the Law Commission. And I was involved in a consultative capacity in that regard. And that all led to the enactment last year, 2015, of the Harmful Digital Communications Act. This act has very wide application indeed because it goes beyond mere social media 
It covers all forms of electronic communication, regardless of platform. So it covers every form of communication as long as it's electronic. And the Act provides two possible remedies. One is a criminal prosecution and the other is a civil enforcement order. The criminal prosecution is alive, it's living, it's now. The civil enforcement order, which will enable you to remove content, harmful content, is not yet in force. We hope it'll be along by the end of the year. And in some respects, these two remedies overlap. So let's talk for a moment about the criminal prosecution. First thing that's got to happen, of course, is that there's got to be the posting, that is the placing on, online, of a digital communication. The perpetrator has got to do that with the intention of causing harm. And when you look at the particular post, you ask yourself, well, would that cause harm to an ordinary person taking into account the position of the victim? So there's a mixed sort of test about it. And then finally, there must be actual harm caused by the electronic communication. So what is harm? It's a word that we use, and I have used quite a bit so far. Well, serious emotional distress. This is online communication bullying. So there isn't going to be a blood nose or bark knuckles or a punch in the arm or anything like that. It's serious emotional distress. And for lawyers, when you have the word serious, that really means something. So what's been happening? So far, there have been 12 prosecutions under the Harmful Digital Communications Act. And the sentences that have been imposed have ranged between supervision and community work all the way to a sentence of 11 months imprisonment for a very serious incident of posting a harmful digital communication. So, that's the criminal side. What about the civil enforcement order? Not in force yet, but it will be. And this remedy is, as I've said, a remedial one. It involves the removal of content. No claims for damages, no claims for reparation or anything like that. This deals with the content itself and how to remove it. And it's by way of what we call a civil enforcement order. And this involves an organisation called an approved agency. And the first port of call, if there is a desire to remove content on the part of an affected individual, is to go to the approved agency, and that agency has yet to be appointed. And the agency will try and resolve the matter by way of negotiation or mediation or discussion between the affected individual and the person who's posted the content, the author. In its dealings, the approved agency has to be sure that there has in fact been harm, remember, serious emotional distress, plus a breach of one of 10 communications principles. And the Act sets out 10 communications principles which are no more and no less than rules for polite conversation, the type of rules that you would normally associate with a polite dialogue. Now, if the approved agency can't resolve the matter, then it will proceed through to the district court. And the court may order that the material be removed, or it may go to the author and say, we're going to make a restraining order. Don't you post anything more like this, because if you do, you will have committed an offence. And furthermore, don't get all of your mates to post the similar sort of content either. So the court will have that power. The court may require an apology or it may give to the affected individual a right of correction or a right of reply. And in addition, the court will have powers to make orders against online content hosts. Suppose, for example, we have an anonymous author. The online content host may be the port of call for having the content removed. It may well be that the anonymous poster can be identified by asking the internet service provider for the name of the particular person who was associated with the IP address at the time that the content was posted. 
This piece of legislation was designed to address cyberbullying, but it goes a lot further than that because serious emotional harm, serious emotional distress, gives the Act a very wide scope indeed. So it could be used for corp by corporate entities or it could be used by individuals for reputational harms that they may have suffered that are causing them damage, which results in serious emotional distress. Serious emotional distress is the threshold. As things stand at the moment for the civil side of things, help is at hand. NetSafe is one organisation in New Zealand that is very experienced with dealing with complaints with cyberbullying, and they have a lot of skills in that area. And most other countries around the world that don't have legislation like the Harmful Digital Communications Act have organisations similar to NetSafe that will be able to deal with incidents of cyberbullying. Now, we've got to be reasonable about this in the same way that the crime of theft is not going to stop people stealing stuff. A law against cyberbullying isn't going to stop cyberbullying or digital communications that cause harm. But what is important is that there is a remedy. The law will provide a remedy for those who suffer from cyberbullying. The good thing about it is that victims no longer have to take it. They no longer have to curl up into a little ball, mentally or physically, and hope that it all goes away. They can do something about it. They can bring the perpetrator to account. Thanks for listening.